Teachers will be starting their teaching in the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna show you three great ideas that you could try in class. They don't, they don't even need to be done at the beginning of a course. They could be done at any time during the year. I'm gonna use free tools. These ideas are really interactive. They'll work in any language and they're all about getting students collaborating together and speaking together. Really hope you like the video and as always, if you do, please like it. Please share it, please comment on it, and of course, join me on my YouTube channel. Please do one of those things, or all of them if you can, because I really do need to push my ranking on YouTube. Let's get started. Now, I know that everyone knows WordWall, but most people don't use this activity, and it's a great one for getting students speaking. It's called card dealing, and so it's their speaking cards, and you click on it, and then you deal the first card and you say to the students, right, for one minute, you've got to talk about this topic. So put your students into pairs or groups and then you can flick the card over. Now you can make this super easy or super difficult. So for example, it could be something as simple as, how did you get interested in English? What inspired you to learn? So if you was working with a higher level group of students, you could ask that type of question. So they get one minute, you can count the minute, keep an eye on the time, and then flick the next card. What? Think of an interest in holiday, tell your partner about it. So get your students working in twos or threes. Each time, they only get a minute to talk about the subject. Now I did this the other day with a group of students, quite high level, and it worked brilliant. But what about if you had a lower level group of students? students, I might ask much simpler questions and maybe I'll get them to write the answers down. So they work in groups of two or three and they write down their answers. And let me just give you an example of that. So again, we're using this card game and click on deal. And the Name first group, five things in the garden. Okay, and then so students write those down. You might give them 30 seconds. And then the next one. Name five countries. Okay, and you're just doing this at a really low level. So you don't have to, uh, in this particular case, it's not even a speaking activity, it's more of a writing activity, but the students will be speaking because they'll be thinking of ideas and they're working in twos or threes. Now, just to point out how I made this game, I'm just gonna click on create an activity and the one that I'm looking at is speaking cards. Okay, so you click here and notice all you need to do is to write out the question. So for example, I'm gonna say name, five animals, okay? And then I'm gonna do another one here. Name five famous cities, okay, etc. Now interestingly, you can also add audio. Remember, this can be in other languages. If you wanna add the audio, which I always do, particularly with the lower level students, click on this button here. And all you need to do when you click on that is wait till the sentence comes up, make sure you've got the right language set. So obviously we need this set to English, and then you do need to generate the audio. Name five animals. Okay, then you would do the same for the second one. Click on the button here, generate the audio. Name five famous cities. And carry on like that. So the level of the questions can really vary. It can be a question as complicated as what did you do with your summer? Talk about it for one minute or as simple as name five or name three objects depending on the level. And I love this activity because I love this kind of element that it's like a dealing cards game. Let's just do one more example. Say name five colors. Okay, now I won't, and then I'm just gonna click on done just to show you then. The game's ready, you click on this button here, and all you need to do is deal the card. Okay, and then the students can then actually ask the question. So really, really good tech, a little activity, very simple, it's in WordWall. You can sign up and use WordWall for free. You can use it up for five games for free. For this second activity, I'm gonna use Padlet. And Padlet is probably the most improved technology that I've come across with the AI added in. I just cannot believe how good this technology is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on plus to make, I'm gonna make a Padlet. And the one that I'm gonna choose is this one really simple one here questions, comments, and so it's actually pre-made, but I'm gonna change it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just write in here and I'm gonna say questions about my job. Okay, so students can ask me questions about my job. Questions about my hobbies and questions about my travels. Now, of course, I could use any title here at the top. 
So the idea here is that this is a getting to know your teacher activity, but of course it could be done with students. And as I said, it could be done almost for anything. It really is a great way. And what do students need to do is to add their questions here. And then afterwards, the teacher can answer the questions. Now, a couple more things to keep in mind. First of all, click here because you want to change the title. And I'm going to call this one getting to know your teacher, getting to know your teacher. So this is a great way of collecting ideas from the students okay your teacher okay now I'm going to show you a really really important trick now so that's my title click on done now the one problem with using Padlet is that if we click here then you'll notice that the students have got loads of options they can put their subject here they can write here but they can do all these sorts of things they can add up audio they can add up video they can add up their webcam they can share a link to a video it makes it really complicated but you can make Padlet really super easy watch this such a simple thing to do just click here and what you want to do is come down to the magic button and the magic button is called field posts click on that button and what you want to do is first of all go to the attachments here and turn them all off so students can't add anything, they can only write. And the other thing that I'm going to suggest is that you turn off even the subject or where they can put their name. Turn that off, hide it. Now what happens is when the students do this activity, if we now show you now, so if they come onto here and they want to do this activity, and you've got two ways really of sharing this, you can do it with a QR code or you can share the link. The students will click here and you'll notice they can't do anything else but ask a question. So for example, when did you start teaching? There's nothing else they can do. It's gonna be anonymous. So they're not gonna worry about adding their name or anything like that. They just simply write their questions. If they wanted to write questions about your travels, they could ask you a question like, have you been to Greece? Okay, and add their questions in. So this is a really, really powerful way of getting your students to interact. Now, how do you share this so that your students can get onto the Padlet and add up their questions and then you can answer the questions? Well, the answer is that you need to click on the share button here and you've got two ways of working. Copy the link to Clipboard, share that link with the students, they can access it. But perhaps the easiest way, if your students have got phones in class, smartphones, is to click on get the QR code and then they just got to simply point their camera at the screen and it will open up the QR code or open up the activity onto the screen. Now, what they do have to do if they're using their phones is first of all, they have to click on whichever topic they want to talk about first. So jobs, hobbies or travels, click on it and then they can write their question. So this is a great way of getting the students to brainstorm questions to ask the teacher. Then afterwards, the teacher can answer the questions. But of course, it could be a completely different topic. You could be asking the students to, for example, think of vocabulary around jobs hobbies and travel, or completely change these categories. But I really like these pre-prepared activities that are already created in Padlet. Now I'm gonna move on and show you my favorite activity, and I'm actually gonna show you some examples of that activity first and what's been created. Really quick break from the video. Please, if you can, like the video, share the video, comment on the video, and of course, join me on my YouTube channel because it really helps to push my rankings on YouTube. And if you want more free videos, come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. We've got loads of content on here. We've got a great section on AI technologies for language teachers. I specialize in making videos to show teachers, language teachers, how to use technology. If you want to go that bit further, think about joining the newsletter. There are 12,000 subscribers. You'll get updated with all the latest videos and the free webinars that we run. But also at the moment, if you sign up, you'll get the free 14 part video course in using technology in language teaching. And I basically highlight some of the best technologies I've come across. And most of the technologies that I highlight are free. Thank you very much. Let's get back to the video. AI in Padlet is extraordinary. And one of the things that you can do is that you can choose to write a description and then it will draw the picture depending on what you've written. And so this can be great as a writing activity to get students to think of a nice description of something that they want to describe, perhaps their perfect house or where they'd love to be at this moment in time or where they were for their favorite holiday, lots of different things. And they write the description, click on the draw button, and it draws the picture. So I did that today with a huge group of teachers. And we can see here some of the pictures 
that were drawn by the teachers okay so they I was doing teacher training session they wrote their descriptions and these are all the pictures that were drawn depending on the descriptions including Harry Potter with an ice cream okay so um, it was a great activity a lot of fun and I had a really I think 120 something people actually adding their ideas up on the screen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you do this now one thing to do if you're going to do this activity is think well what are you going to do before so how are you going to get the students prepared for this are you going to show them some pictures are you going to get them to dream of their perfect place which is the picture that I drew here and which most people did that was the really the activity was to think of an ideal place that you'd like to be now and I'm going to show you how then I would do this. So you definitely want a, a starting point where you would get the students to think about the vocabulary or think about it or plan their description. And then they're going to write their description and then they're going to generate their image. So how do we do this? I'm going to show you now. So just going back to Padlet, okay. I'm going to go back to my Padlets by clicking up here. Now, one thing is obviously if you're using Padlet, unfortunately, you are limited in the free tool to only free Padlets. So you will always have to delete Padlets at some point so that you can free up more space to use others. Now, I'm lucky I have an account with more Padlets, but most people in the free account, you've only got three Padlets for free. Now, when you want to do this activity, you need to click on Make. And the good thing about this activity is that it's kind of already set up for you. Just click on Art Showcase. Now, you don't need to change any of the settings for this one. Just click on Done. But what you do need to do is go to that magic button. So click again over here on the settings. You want to come down. And this is really important. You want to come down to the section of Field Posts. And you want to turn off all of the attachments. So click on Custom. Turn all of them off so none except for the one that you do want to allow is the AI option of I can't draw turn that on now the other thing that I would suggest that you do click on save is also you can if you want choose to do this anonymously so you can click on subject and you can turn off so the students don't have to even write their name. You may want to keep that in. Now, I'm going to keep that in for this one. Though I'm going to demonstrate now how this technology works. So, when a student comes on, they click on this button. They can write their name at the top. And then all they need to do is to click on I can't draw. So let's just imagine a nice scene that I want to describe. And I'm going to say, uh, let's imagine I'm thinking of my perfect house. Uh, my uh, A house in the Cotswolds with lots of trees and flowers all around. So I've written my description. I've written a, basically I've asked for a house in the Cotswold with lots of trees and flowers all around and a river at the front now don't click on this button because it will clear it you click on this button and now it's going to generate the image so the the language that's being produced is when the students write their descriptions so it's the vocabulary and the language that they need now what it will give you is four views now i like all of those but i like this one here because i've got a bridge as well so i now need to click on that that's my option now i have to wait for that image to be processed and then I can click on publish. Now, one thing I can write a little caption here, okay? And so if I want to, I could say, yeah, like Russell's My House in the Cotswolds. Okay, so great way of kind of getting students to do a writing activity. I'm going to click on publish and the first one would appear. Now, all the students would do the same. You would do the same that you did last time. You would click on this button here and you can either share them the link copy the link and share it with them or again you could use the QR code to get the students to access with the QR code and they could access the Padlet using the QR code and then they will be able to text in their description and it will produce the picture and then you're going to get lots and lots of pictures on the screen that you can then view now interestingly what you could do afterwards is then perhaps get students to comment on each other's so you can come over to here and if it's not turned on, I think it is actually already turned on, but you've got comments. You can turn comments on and then students can leave comments or 
you could get them to choose, for example, to give some feedback and choose their, their favorite one to like it or something like that. So you could turn this into more of a, from moving it from a, a writing activity and vocabulary generating activity into an activity where perhaps uh, people perhaps write questions about, well, where is this place? Yeah, where did you choose to live? Yeah, or something like that. So it could be something around that theme, or as I said, they could comment on it. I really like this picture. This is my favorite. Or I notice when you comment these days, because it's changed a little bit, you can leave your comments here at the bottom. So you can say, yeah, for example, you might say, this is a great picture. Yeah, and just leave a comment like that. So you can do that. That's one option, of course. But the other option, as I said, would be to perhaps get people to write questions about the picture. So where is this? Yeah. Why do you like this place? Yeah. Um, Etc. Okay. So I love this idea of drawing pictures and I love the idea of the language being generated at the beginning. And then it's really important to think about what you're going to do afterwards. Are they going to vote on their favorite? Uh, are you going to get the students, say some of the students to actually stand up and, and, and maybe even describe their, their picture? You'd have to think about a nice activity to do afterwards. Okay, really hope you liked that video. And don't forget, if you want more free videos, come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. We've got this menu system here at the top and there's plenty of drop down menus and I've tried to organize the content to make it easier to find the content. And there's a special AI section that you might find really useful and that is becoming very popular. Don't forget also that you can sign up to the newsletter. If you sign up to the newsletter, you'll get a free 14 part video course, which basically highlights the best technologies that I've come across for teaching and learning. Remember, my specialization really is using technology for language teaching. And there are no tricks, literally all the technologies that I show you are free. Another thing you can do is join me on Patreon if you want to have live training with me. For $6 a month, you get a monthly training session where we all meet online and we look at a technology in detail. We do activities with that technology to really learn it. So you can then obviously bring it into your teaching and learning. And along with that, I also add up every month three additional videos. Now these videos are exclusive to Patreon. There are no advertisements. I get straight into the training. And I often deal with technologies that I don't cover in my YouTube videos, particularly AI technologies, or I go into more detail. Now the other great thing about Patreon is that if you join Patreon, you get access to all the previous videos that have already been uploaded. Finally, if you do want to contact me about me doing some training with your organization, then you can contact me from the website. Just scroll down a bit and you'll see it says contact Russell. Obviously, I do a lot of training around using technology in language teaching. And obviously, more recently, a lot of that training has been around AI. However, I also train people in using Camtasia. Camtasia is the technology that I use to make the videos. I am actually a TechSmith recommended Camtasia trainer. I can take your level up to a really high level if you wanna learn more about how to use Camtasia and how I make my videos. I do do training on a one-to-one -one basis and of course in groups as well. Finally, if you wanted to build up your YouTube channel, if you wanna know how I did that, that was a lot of time and effort spent studying how YouTube works and I've managed to get to more than 80,000 subscribers and I don't advertise at all. I've literally built up that channel through making videos and doing the right things on YouTube. If you wanna learn more about how to make a YouTube channel or set up your business in YouTube and you really can make money on YouTube almost right from the beginning, then please contact me. Again, even if you're an individual or a group of people, I'm always interested. Go to the website, come down to Contact Russell and you can contact me from there. I'm going to leave some more videos on the screen now that I think you might be interested in and thank you very much.